Hello everyone. On the last lesson we talked about uh, the English language, its origin, uh, about how was it formed, how it was influenced by other languages. And um, now today we are going to talk about language acquisition. And this word acquisition comes from the verb acquire. And acquire means, acquire the language means asvoit music, not learn so there are two terms. It's, it's going to be there. Gonna, there's going to be two terms. Uh, it's acquire the language and learn the language. So today we will talk about mainly about how to learn language and how what is the difference between acquisition and learning. Okay, and I hope that you will get some new information that will help you. That will help in your learning process. Okay, so let's begin. So, um, languages can be easily learned or acquired. То есть, язык можно изучать, либо осваивать. And these are two methods in mastering the language. One of them requires efforts, focused work, and mainly dealing with the structure of the language. So, it means, for example, when we go to, to, go to school, have English classes, or when we attend some courses, like online courses, like my courses, or other any other courses offline, so when you do some exercises, grammar exercises, you um, work with uh, textbooks. So this is a focused work, and this requires some efforts. Yes, and you and this is a process of learning. And the other uh, acquisition or acquiring the language, this process is achieved naturally. Uh, when you acquire the language, you usually are exposed to the language. It means that you are around native speakers, you live maybe in a native speaking country, like uh, you in an English speaking country, like for example Australia or New Zealand or the USA or Great Britain. You live among those people who speak this language as their first, uh, as their native tongue. So, and you are daily exposed to it. You daily listen to it. You daily hear uh, others speak are speaking this language, so that's why this is acquiring language. And children learn the language by acquisition, not learning process. So um, this question, learn the language or acquire the language, this question uh, can be a bit disputable, you know. It was disputable between scientists, linguists, it was always discussed. Uh, and they were uh, questioning, they, they have a question uh, to learn la the language. So should we learn the language or should we acquire it like children do? Okay, so one of the scientists and linguists uh, is Stephen Krashen. And today we will talk about his series. Okay, and uh, maybe you will find some information, some new tips to help you in your learning process. So this, uh, this guy, uh, he, his name is Stephen Krashen and he was born in uh, there is a mistake in 1941, not 94. Okay, and he is from the USA. He is a linguist. He is famous for his five uh, series about how to acquire the language, and he has published uh, many books, over 100 books and articles, and he has been inviting. Uh, he has been delivering um, many lectures at universities in the US USA and Canada. So he's very famous. Okay, so. And this is him, and these are his five series, hypothesis, hypothesis series, okay? The first one is acquisition learning. Uh, then next is natural order. Uh, third is uh, input or comprehensive input. Monitor and affective filter. So these five are his series, uh, and he's famous for, uh, for comprehensible input mainly. And uh, don't panic and don't be afraid that uh, this lesson may seem to you a bit difficult, a bit complicated, but uh, I think that this task is still achievable, uh, achievable for you, so that's why I um, prepared, you, uh, f uh, prepared it for you. So the first, uh, we are not going to um, talk about all his series, only some of them, two or three, and uh, because I, find I found them a bit um, interesting and helpful, so that's why I chose them. Okay, uh, the first hypothesis is the acquisition learning distinction. Uh, acquisition and learning distinction, it means distinction, различие, отличие между ними, между acquisition and learning. 
So it's the, uh, the most fundamental of the five hypotheses in Prussian theory, and it's the mostly widely known among linguists and language teachers. According to Krashen, there are two independent systems of foreign language performance. Согласно Крашену, есть две независимые системы, да, именно изучение английского и э, иностранного языка. Это the acquired system and the learned system. Uh, the acquired system or acquisition is a product of a subconscious process, very similar to the process children undergo when they acquire their first language. Subconscious process – это подсознательный процесс, да, когда дети усваивают его как их первый язык. They don't learn it, yes? They only um, listen to their parents and uh, try to copy them, yes? The learned system or learning is a product of formal instruction and it comprises conscious process. То есть это продукт формальной инструкции и включает в себя сознательный процесс, да, с результатами в сознательных знаниях о языке, о самом языке, да? For example, knowledge of grammar rules. And uh, look, at, uh, look at this sentence. A deductive approach in a teacher-centered setting produces learning. То есть дедукционный метод. Да? Дедукция – это когда вы uh, концентрируетесь на каких-то мелочах, а не на самом главном. Да? И именно в таких uh, классах, где в основном управляет и разговаривает учитель, это ведет к learning. While an inductive approach in a student-centered setting leads to acquisition, в то время как вы фокусируетесь на самом главном, на интерактиве, на коммуникациях, именно в классе, где в основном у нас студент важен, самый главный студент, и он больше всего говорит, это ведет к acquisition. Okay, and according to Krashen, learning is less important than acquisition. So we, uh, we teachers should be focused mainly on, uh, on acquisition, okay? So, next theory, and uh, this is the most, uh, I think, uh, the most important theory, uh, it's comprehensible input. What is comprehensible? It means that language uh, that can be understood by listeners, okay? For example, if I give you some uh, audio or video materials, so it should be, uh, it should, it should, uh, it should fit your level, okay? Uh, it, it, it should suit your level. And you should understand not all the words, maybe, but mainly. You should get the idea of it. Uh, you should be able to get the main idea. And according to Krashen's theory of language acquisition, giving learners this kind of input helps them acquire language naturally, rather than learn it consciously. Uh, it means that when I give you some, for example, some um, videos or audios, and not from textbooks, uh, from, for example, YouTube channels, uh, I make you listen to the authentic material, yes, to the authentic language, because I'm not adapting it, uh, I don't adapt them, не адаптирую их, okay, uh, to your level, to your language level, but I know that you are able to understand them, so that's why this is comprehensible input, and it's, o o it's always very important in learning the language, in acquiring it. Okay, and Krashen summarizes it, his comprehensible input hypothesis in the simple and elegant expression. То есть он uh, описал свой вот этот input, свой, свою теорию, в, таком, в такой формуле, I plus one. And here the letter I stands for input, which is a student's current language ability level. So I – это вот уровень студента. Input, который соответствует уровню студента. And plus one is exposure to slightly more advanced language that leads to acquisition. Plus one – это получается exposure, то есть uh, когда мы вас подвергаем к, к более чуть трудному материалу, да, когда вы слушаете и, или видите или читаете материал, который чуть выше вашего уровня. И это именно ведет к, к acquisition. When we combine both parts of the statement into I plus one, we give students a task that is challenging but achievable. И именно тогда этот таск для студента может быть а, трудным, challenging, да, бросающий вызов, но achievable, то есть достижимый. То есть человек этот может пере, а, как говорится, усвоить. And the I1 expression is our key to understanding Krashen's hypothesis. If we are only providing the I level of language exposure to our students, we are not challenging them enough to acquire new language. Если мы только предоставляем I level, for example, you speak Eng elementary English and I only give you elementary level um, language, uh, you are not 
going to develop. You know, you're not going to improve your English skills. So on the other hand, if I give you more than enough, if I give you, for example, I plus two, and we're giving our students a challenge that is too difficult to achieve, this often leads to frustration, decreased motivation, and desire to simply give up. Sometimes I can give uh, you very difficult uh, materials. Uh, and if I do, then it will lead to frustration. Да, это может привести к расстройству, расстроенности, уменьшенной мотивации, и просто вы в конце концов это бросите дело. Поэтому эта его теория заключается в том, чтобы вам давать, получается, comprehensible input давать в том мире, в той мере, которая чуть выше вашего уровня. Окей, okay. next. И последнее. The affective filter. Okay, affective filter hypothesis suggests that a number of affective variables play a significant role in second language acquisition. Именно эта гипотеза, она предлагает, что, или как бы предполагает, что количество вот именно affective variables, affective, как affective, affective это то, что вызывает, влияет да, на, на вас, например, ваша мотивация, ваша самоуверенность там, и так далее, и так далее. Вот, например, посмотрите. These variables include motivation, self-confidence, anxiety, and personality traits. То каким образом вот эти вот переменные variables, ваша мотивация, ваша уверенность в себе, ваша тревожность или нетревожность, либо ваши личные качества, насколько это влияет именно процессу. Crashing claims that learners with high motivation, self-confidence, and good self-image, and low level of anxiety or extroversion are better equipped for success. So, for example, uh, if you are motivated, if you are self-confident, and if you have a uh, high self-esteem, and if you are not anxious, and if you are an extrovert, then you are um, likely to succeed in second language acquisition. Okay, you are likely to be successful. And if, um, in contrast, if you, for example, lo uh, have low motivation, low self-esteem, and you are anxious, you are nervous, you are, you know, worried about something, and you are at the same time you are introvert, then uh, it can raise the affective filter and form a mental block. То есть это как бы формирует такой ментальный блок, барьер that prevents comprehensible input from being used for acquisition. И таким образом это предотвращает, то есть не допускает, да, то, чтобы, uh, не допускает то, чтобы, uh, получается, у вас был какой-то прогресс. In other words, when the filter is up, it impedes language acquisition. Если фильтр настроен, то есть, наоборот, если фильтр вот поднимается, вот эти вот, именно все вот эти факторы, плохая мотивация, anxiety и так далее, и так далее, это мешает к освоению языка. It impedes language acquisition. And on the other hand, positive effect is necessary, uh, but not sufficient on its own for acquisition to take place. Okay, for example, this guy is thinking. He is sitting on the Spanish classes, and he is thinking like this. Wow, she sure is using a lot of Spanish. She never speaks in English anymore. Okay, this is his thoughts, and because the teacher is only speaking Spanish. And now, oh, she's calling on people. Please, not me, not me. Oh, thank goodness, it wasn't me this time. So the teacher is calling someone to, to uh, speak up, to tell something, to go to the blackboard, yes, and, and he's, uh, you know, he's hoping that it's not him. And then he say, oh, understood that and that, and this is comprehensible input, and he's going to comprehend what the teacher is saying, okay? And she, he said, I think she's talking about the weekend, yeah, definitely future tense. Then he says, how would I say that? Oh, um, there is no way I can talk without practicing it in my bed, in my head first. So this is the way when we, when he wants to produce the language, when he wants to say something. And the last one, I think I read about this somewhere. I read these words. Where I did it? Where did I see them? He f tries to recall. Yes, he tries to memorize something. So this is the process. This is what happens in the head of your student, of you, for example, when you are learning the, uh, the language. And this is uh, a short, you know, shim uh, to make you memorize this um, this may be difficult theory. So what helps you to acquire the language? It's comprehensible input. And comprehensible input, it means that information or the, those materials that uh, you can understand. 
a bit challenging, a bit difficult, but still you can understand it. And what uh, helps you to acquire the language? It's your motivation, it's your high self-esteem, it's uh, uh, when you are in non-anxious position, non-anxious state, yes, you have no anxieties, no worries, and you uh, you feel comfortable in the classroom, you feel comfortable with me, for example, when, you, when I teach you the language. So, and this helps you to acquire the language, and if you have uh, if you ha uh, if you are demotivated, if you have low self-esteem, it impedes, Mishayat, it impedes uh, to acquire the language. And okay, about input, there are, um, it, uh, for example, m maybe you have concluded that you should have, the, you should have input. And for example, we live uh, in a s in a country where we don't speak naturally. We don't no normally speak English here in our streets, in the shops. Yes. Uh, we speak only Russian or Kazakh, and where do we, g we where can we get those input? It's very important, yes. And where can we get it? So there are mainly two forms of input that we can get. The first one is audio input, and we can read audio books. Listen, I mean, we can listen to audio books. Uh, you can find them on YouTube channel, and it uh, it should fit uh, your level. Конечно, он должен подходить вашему уровню. It should be understandable for you. And then you should... Uh, next one is podcasts. Podcasts, you can get it from the applications that you can download on your smartphones and listen to, the, listen to them while driving, for example, while washing the dishes. And it will also should be uh, not so difficult for you. For example, BBC, uh, six-minute language, uh, six-minute learning English, uh, such podcasts, there are a lot of, okay? Next, uh, next input is video input. And this is the most, you know, mm, how to say that, the richest part, you know. And the, I don't know. For example, when I was learning English, I didn't have, I didn't have such opportunities. I didn't have such uh, chances to learn it because we didn't have uh, so many videos. We just had some books, you know, uh, magazines, and uh, so that's why we were craving for uh, for some for such materials. Craving, то есть мы очень сильно стремились или голодали да, по, таком, по таким материалам, которые сейчас в доступе. For example, you can, as a video input, you, can, you have a lot of channels on YouTube, uh, language channels or maybe uh, fun channels, uh, bloggers, okay? So that's why you can uh, choose one and uh, watch these videos, okay? But my tip is to choose, uh, in the first place, to choose one channel and to so to look all the to watch all the videos, and then after finishing, you can you can go to the next channel, okay? Because if you if you look at the uh, if you watch different channels at the same time, you will be disoriented, you will be distracted a lot, okay? So that's why focus on on the single channel, okay? Um, there are a lot of channels, for example, that I like. Uh, one of them is uh, learn English with TV series. Uh, if you need, if you want, I can send you the link. Okay, next uh, website is ororo.tv. Uh, uh, you can see the videos um, free, free, but for uh, an hour. Okay, during an hour, you can uh, watch f videos for free. Uh, also, you can uh, download Netflix, Netflix, or um, maybe uh, many other uh, streaming sites. Uh, s this is a website where you can find a lot of uh, films, films in English, for example. Uh, it's chargeable. You should pay for uh, for it six uh, six thousand tenge a month. But the first uh, month is is a trial month, so it's free. Okay, you can just try it. If you like it, you you can continue watching. If you don't, you can just cancel. Uh, the next is puzzlemovies.com, and I think this is the most useful and the most efficient way to uh, to learn English by looking, by watching, by listening, but it's also chargeable. For example, you can, uh, you should pay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you should pay 12,000 tenge for six months, okay? And you should get all kinds of films and all kinds of serial soaps, uh, you know, everything with subtitles, with English subtitles, Russian subtitles. And if you click on the subtitles, it will tra it will be translated simultaneously. So it's very, very interesting, and and I think it's very helpful. So next, 
And now I'm going to give you some new lexes which will help you speak up, which will help you to uh, prepare for your speaking tasks. So that's why let me just give you these words. Require efforts, achieve something, you know, achievement, be exposed to the language, быть представленным языку, то есть слышать этот язык, be able to listen to the language and interact with others, mainly native speakers. And the next one is acquire, мы уже об этом много говорили, meaningful interaction, интерактив uh, с общением со смыслом, то есть, for example, uh, sometimes when we teach children, when we teach students, uh, sometimes teachers, they uh, don't give, how to say that, meaningful tasks. They just say, complete these uh, exercises with these words and uh, or they, they, they can say like, retell the story. It's not meaningful. What is meaningful? Meaningful, it means that purposeful, uh, with a purpose. Со смыслом, с целью, да? For example, when you go outside, you're not going to retell the story to anyone at all, yes? Uh, meaningful interaction, when you say something that uh, the other people, the other, uh, the other person uh, don't know, doesn't know, yes? And for example, when you ask him to say something that you don't know, this is an interaction, interaction and this has a meaning. And when you retell something or, uh, you know, uh, whatever, yes? So meaningful interaction should happen when you um, have lessons with your teacher. Next, widely known, широко известный, subconscious, you know, conscious, lead to, вообще lead, uh, от этого слова есть слово leader, uh, lead to something, привести к чему-либо, да? Lead a healthy lifestyle, вести здоровый образ жизни. Lead a team, вести команду за собой. Despite something, несмотря на что-то, uh, вот despite здесь ничего не надо. Есть еще одно слово похожее in spite, но там уже будет in spite of something. Learn consciously, учиться сознательно. Current language level, challenging, achievable, play a significant role, self-esteem, self-confidence, anxiety. Anxiety, посмотрите, как читается anxiety, однако от него слово adjective anxious. Да? Anxious. Inhibition, комплексы, сдерживание, задержка и так далее prevent from doing something, предотвращать, либо не допускать, okay? Sufficient, достаточный, impede, мешать, тормозить. So, and also I wanted to give you some tasks to uh, improve your English, I mean to uh, improve your world building skills. So, uh, this is when the noun uh, formed out of verb, yes? For example, complete, завершать, completion, завершение, achieve, and uh, you've got to complete this form, okay? You've got to, you have to complete this form, you have to give me noun forms of these verbs. And also you can, uh, you should do this task, you should um, rephrase or give the um, noun of this verb, for example, uh, so that they, they have the similar meaning, like teenagers who go on adventures should be proud of what they accomplish. Подростки, которые ходят, ну, которые ввязываются в авантюры, да, или в приключения, они долж, э, должны гордиться тем, что они, э, к чему они, к чему, к чему они достигают. И вам нужно здесь написать, э, то есть предложение переделать так, чтобы здесь был noun. Teenagers who go on adventures should be proud of their accomplishment. То есть они должны гордиться своим достижением. Э, получается это задание на то, чтобы вы э, просто запомнили, что есть глаголы и есть от них происходящие существительные. And the last one is speaking task as always. And uh, these words will help you, you know, these words will help you to speak, to speak up and to be ready uh, to discuss these questions on the online lesson. So the first question is, what do you think about comprehensible input? Okay, so I want your opinion. Are you going to practice it? So are you going to be exposed to the language and in which ways you are going to be, to be exposed? Uh, what do you choose? Audio input or video input or reading input, okay? What do you think is most um, useful for you? Audio, video or reading? And the next question, do you agree with the view that success of the learner depends rather on his self-esteem, motivation and mental state than on the teaching techniques? Согласны ли вы с тем, что успех учащегося зависит больше от его самооценки, мотивации и умственного состояния, нежели от каких-то техник, которые при, uh, использует учитель. What kind of input is more effective and available for you? 
If you had a chance to learn other languages, what would it be? Are you planning to learn other languages? Which strategy, strategy would you use to learn it? What are your uh, own tips? What are your own tips to learn English? Okay, so this is the end. I hope that it wasn't so <laughs> difficult for you. It wasn't so boring. Uh, if it was boring, so tell me because because um, I will not. I'm not going to make such lessons. Maybe boring lessons. If it's boring, of course. But I um, I thought that it will be very interesting for you, and it will be very helpful in your learning process. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.